All right, my people. It is good to have you here with us tonight. Uh, tonight, as we get ready, we're going to pray. And I think that's what we're going to do. I'm going to open us in prayer. And then because we're talking about prayer now in confirmation class, uh, the next three, four, five, six weeks, I'm going to have you write out a prayer. All right? So what we'll do is I'll have a different scenario where you might pray. So, for example, maybe you are in a car with your, with your family and you get a flat tire and you're stuck on the side of the road, you would say a prayer, right? And think about that prayer. You might pray that someone would come and stop and help us. You might pray that we can get to our destination quickly. Uh, you might pray uh, that, um, I don't know, a semi doesn't come and, and kill you, right? There's all kinds of things you could pray about. Uh, that might be a scenario. We'll probably pray for a mealtime prayer. We'll have an example when we pray maybe at a school event. So starting next week, that's what I'll have you do. We'll all kind of write a prayer, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of those prayers and I'll read it publicly as our prayer. All right? Sound like a plan? All right. Uh, tonight, if you would join me in prayer, we pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you brought us back together for another night of confirmation class. Uh, help us to pay attention tonight, to understand this gift of prayer even more, and that we would be people who pray, trusting in our God who promises to hear us, to answer us, and has a desire to give us all things in Christ Jesus. Uh, we ask this in your name. Amen. All right, uh, let's see. Hey, tonight I want to review a little bit, and instead of uh, gummy candy tonight, I have chocolates. Do you oh. like chocolate? All right, I got these just delicious chocolates. I had a party and nobody ate any of the candy, so I brought it here. So, last week we did acolyte training. I want you to remind me, uh, what is the number one rule of acolyting in the church? Uh, Sam. Don't burn it down. Good, that was a horrible throw. Uh, let's see, what's rule number two, Mia? Don't make it look like, Don't make it look like an accident? Or, make it look like you did yeah, perfect. Yeah, good. Uh, good, good, good. All right, here's rule number three. We haven't talked about this rule, but some of, several of you have failed me. When you light all the candles and you get done and you put out your wick, what do you do next, Morgan? You put the wick back up. What happens if you leave the wick inside, Jackson? It melts to the side. So we had that happen on Sunday. I only had one acolyte stick that worked, all right? So if, uh, Morgan, if you, uh, uh, if you acolyte, please, 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 please put it up. Uh, what candles do we light first? I uh, mean, uh, altar. altar candles, good. If you're acolyting by yourself, the wall candles, which side do you light first? Brendan. Right. The right side. Yep, good. When you light the candles on the wall, which ones do you start with, Ella? On the wall candles, which candle do you light first? Good. And which one do you put out last? The one closest to the cross, right? So it's in and then it's out. Good. Let's see. If you are in a procession, there are, there are acolyte sticks, there are torches, there's a cross, there's a pastor, there's a seminarian. Who always comes in first? What always begins the procession? Morgan? The processional cross. The cross. And you might not know this. Who always comes in last? You. Me, the pastor. Good, right? So it's always cross, then acol or cross, then torches, then acolytes. Then the pastor, right? The best comes in last. All right, yeah, I know. There's something uh, very bad about that. Um, good. When you're acolyting, this is important, um, you have to participate, right? Because I got to tell you, I have people at church who notice that, who are looking, who ask me after church, how come the acolytes didn't sing today? All right, make sure you're always singing, standing up, singing, and the like. Um, you get to help the pastor lead the whole church in worship, okay? Uh, let's review a little more. Uh, we had talked in our first unit about the commandments. How many commandments are there? Uh, ten. Yeah, so good. 
Nailed it. All right, there are ten, and here's a random one. What is the fourth commandment? No. Mia? Honor your father and mother. Good. What's it? Do you want chocolate or caramel or white chocolate or strawberry? All right, this is delicious. Uh, it's just chocolate. Yep. Uh, all right, we then talked about um, the Reformation. Who is the main leader of the Reformation? Carson. Who is the big guy? He was a priest. He was a monk. He was a leader in the church. He sparks the Reformation. He nails something to a church door. He wrote the catechism. Martin Luther. Yeah, ding, 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 ding. Martin Luther. Martin Luther nails what to the church door? Who has an answer? Jackson. Oh, good. Do you remember how many? 95. 95. Good. Did Martin Luther want to start a new church? Just yes or no? No. No, right? His problem was he just wanted to fix false teaching. And that's what we do today. We just want to fix false teaching. We don't need to start our own thing. Um, all right. Uh, good. So we've had commandments. We've had Martin Luther. What unit are we on now? Bella. What unit are we on now? We studied it last week. What unit are we on now? Prayer. Hey, you're so good. All right. We're on prayer. Uh, good. We had just kind of talked about prayer last week, and today we're diving in. All right? So I gave you all a booklet. We'll have some time for candy in a little bit. Uh, I gave you all a booklet if you take those out. The one I just gave you, it said prayer on it. And if anybody finds mine, let me know. Maybe it's on my desk. All right. But the Lord's Prayer looks like this. You'll notice if you open it up, we did the getting started last week. Yes, can I get you one? Absolutely. Here you go. All right. Last week, if you remember, I didn't have a booklet for you, so I just printed you off a page. We kind of did the get it, getting started. You don't have to fill this in, but I want to just review this with you. Last week, the goal wasn't to get necessarily a right answer. It was just to get the juices flowing, all right? So when we talk about what prayer is, give me an answer. What, 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 how, what, how, much you, how might you describe what prayer is, Mina? Yeah, prayer is talking to God. That's what prayer is. It's not this magical thing of putting your hands in just the right position and standing on your left foot and holding your head in the right way. No, prayer is simply talking to God. That can be with your hands folded. That can be with your hands out. Uh, that can be speaking out loud. It can be speaking in your mind. But prayer is simply talking to God. Uh, why would you pray? Give me an answer. What might you think, Morgan? Yes, yeah, so you might pray for other people. Good. Uh, Ella, why might you pray? Don't overthink it. Well, we pray all the time, right? So what's a time when you might pray? Can you think of something? Ooh, okay, so for other people, and to help, right? So you need help, and we're asking God to help. That's a good one. Why else might you pray? Healing. Healing, yeah, yeah, so maybe to help me, right? So you can pray for yourself, too. Lord, I need help, help me. Yep. When you're low on money. When you're low on money, yep, so help. Yeah, you can pray that way. Lord, help me win the lottery. And I think more often than not, God says no to that prayer, but we can pray it. Uh, here's another reason. You remember we talked about this last time. Why do we pray? Because God tells us to. What's that? Uh, you can throw that away now. That was just to get us started. Can I copy? You may. You may. All right, so one of the reasons we pray is because God tells us in the scriptures, hey, I want to hear from you. If you think of it like a parent and a kid, I know when mom and dad pick you up from school, we don't always want to talk after school. I just want to sit in the back seat, I want to listen to music, and I want my mom to not talk to me, all right? But what does your mom always want to do? Talk to you, right? Well, not as if God is some overbearing parent, 
But God is our Father, and He actually wants to talk to us. So He tells us in the Scriptures, talk to me. And so that's what we're going to do. Uh, number three here, we had asked, who, who taught you how to pray? And some of you said last time, well, the pastor taught me. But I challenge you, I bet that's not true. I bet you've said prayers way before you came to confirmation class. Who is the first person that taught you when you pray you fold your hands? I bet it's your mom and dad, right? Maybe grandma, but I would bet it's someone in your life who taught you before you go to bed, you say, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. How many of you know that prayer? I know it. You don't say it? That's okay. Right? But often that's a prayer. All right. Uh, four things. What are things we pray for? Well, we talked about that. You can pray for yourself. You can pray for others. We can pray for uh, help that we need. All right. Moving in a little bit more about prayer, uh, defining prayer. Here's what I want you to do. Uh, at, at, like at your table, okay? So you guys can talk for a few minutes, but at your table, I want you to answer these questions for me, all right? So who, uh, what, how, where, why, and when about prayer? If you would look at these and fill them out. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to summarize it on this sheet, okay? When you go to your catechism, you'll notice the question numbers. That's where you'll find it. Do not write out a whole paragraph, all right? You, you can but you don't have to, okay? So for instance, when it says question 237, where should we pray? Um, it'll say, kind of summarizing it, everywhere, right? That can be an answer. When you look at question 232 for why, all the way on the right, it's gonna give you a whole bunch of, of stuff. I'd probably write down everything underneath A and B, all right? A and B, that'll kind of help you. So get started, we'll talk about it as a class, if you are kind of confused or don't know what to write, we'll talk about it in about four minutes. But how about you spend some time at your table and uh, fill them in. All right? And go.
hey, if you are done or close to being done, uh, let's kind of walk through this together. All right? So when we're thinking about prayer, uh, who do we pray for? Sam. Everyone, right? So we pray for everyone, which is what you said. But I like how you started. We pray for ourselves, we pray for other people, and then did you notice how it ends? Who else do we pray for? Our enemies. Our enemies. That's kind of a weird thing to think about. Why would we pray for our enemies? Well, think about it. Are we going to pray that our enemies prosper? No. Probably not. So I'm not going to pray. Heavenly Father, I hope that my bully has a great day bullying me tomorrow, right? No. But what we pray is we pray for him. Hey, this person's mistreating me. Lord, I hope you work on his heart. I hope you can bring that person to faith. Uh, Lord, I hope that person can make good choices today. And, and so we're going to pray even for our enemies that God would work on their life. All right, so who do we pray for? The answer is, well, we can pray for everyone. Uh, but I like that idea, even our enemies. All right, uh, what do we pray? Or what is prayer? I'm sorry. What is prayer? Jack says that hand up. What is prayer at the bottom there? Talking to God. Yep, speaking to God. Yep, prayer is talking to God. Good. Good, good, good. All right, what about how? How do we pray? Um, this is a long section. Did you kind of get think of something right here important? What did you think? All right, we'll come back to that. Well, so yeah. All right, this is a little confusing. I want you to write this down. All right, how do we pray? We pray through faith in Christ. We pray through faith in Jesus. And then underneath that, right, so through faith in Jesus, and then underneath that, right, simple. Simple. So can we pray extravagantly? Absolutely. We do that at church sometimes, right? So right before the scripture reading, we have what's called the collect. Do you remember that part of the service? Nope. It's labeled in your bulletin called the collect. And that's when the pastor goes up. It's right after uh, confession absolution. And I hold my hands like this and I say a prayer. Right? I turn around to the church and I say, the Lord be with you. You say. And also, and also with you. And then I say, let us pray. And I turn around and how do I pray? With my hands lifted up. Right? That's kind of extravagant. Then there's an order to the prayer. Heavenly Father, at the baptism of your Son, Jesus, you declared him to be the beloved Son of God. Help us to be beloved sons in your kingdom. Uh, in the same through Jesus Christ, our Lord, all that. All right? So it's extravagantly. But, but is that the only way we can pray? No. No. I love how the catechism says this. How can we pray? I would think more often than not, our prayers are simple. So sometimes, can I prayer be this simple? Your teacher's handing out a test before school, before, before uh, the big exam, and you fold your hands and say, uh, Lord, help me do good at this test on that. Does that prayer count? No. Yeah. And have you ever been just so worked up, you're just you're overwhelmed. There's basketball practice and volleyball practice, and there's friends to hang out with, and mom's yelling at me, and dad doesn't understand, and, and all of this is going on, and suddenly you just fold your hands and say, Lord, help me. Does that prayer count? Lord, help me. Three words. Does that count? Absolutely. When you pray in confirmation class and you say, Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Help us to have a good confirmation class. Amen. Does that prayer count? Yeah. Absolutely. Does God hear that prayer? Does he love those prayers? Absolutely. And so how do we pray? Well, all of our prayers are in faith, but we can pray simply. All right, so that's what I write down. How do we pray? We pray simple prayers. All right, uh, 232, why do we pray? Why do we pray? I said, look at A and B. I would say why. One, he commands us to pray. Right? So make sure you wrote that part down. He tells us to. And then the second reason here, in my opinion, the main reason why do we pray? Because he promises to hear us. Right? 
this isn't some busy work assignment that a teacher gives. Have you ever had those in class? Yeah. Where it's just busy work and it's just dumb. And the teacher needs to like fill a half an hour of time. So you have to like draw a picture and do a worksheet and it's just kind of silly. Right? That's not how God works. God doesn't give us busy work. He doesn't say, hey, you should do this task so you know you can look like you care about me. No, no, no. He says, when you pray, I promise I will listen to you. When you talk to mom and dad, do mom and dad always listen to you? No. No. They, they just don't, right? Sometimes they're distracted. Sometimes they don't care. Sometimes they want you simply to go away. But God promises always to hear us and always to answer us. All right. Uh, let's see. 237, where should you pray? Everywhere. Everywhere. And when should you pray? 238? Yeah, frequently, right? When should you pray? Often. All the time. Uh, all the time. And constantly. Constantly. Good. All right, questions about prayer so far? Are you with me so far? This is just kind of an introduction. We're getting the juices flowing, okay? Why are we doing the ACT? We are doing that next. So, when we've been praying in class, I've given you kind of a four bullet points on how to pray, all right? So if you say, Pastor, I don't know where to start, we're going to address God, we're going to thank God, we're going to ask Him for something, and we're going to say amen. Well, here, Acts, is another way to pray, to pray. This is what you might call a prayer model, okay? So you have A-C-T-S, kind of four parts that will help you know what to say. So, what do you think the A stands for? Got a guess? Oh, you would think it doesn't. Uh, you would think I kind of tricked you. The A stands for adoration. You want to write that down? Adoration. And does anybody know what adoration means? Oh, wait. It's like, uh, it's, um, I don't know how to describe it. Like, showing affection. I think close. Um, to like, show him that. <laughs> To show that you care about, yes, on that next box, I'd write this. It means praise. <laughs> Adoration means praise. So, when you start your prayer, you might say, Heavenly Father, you are an awesome God. Heavenly Father, you are the king of the entire universe. Uh, but you're going to praise God. Lord, you are all-powerful. Lord, you are awesome. So we're going to praise God. All right, what do you think the C stands for? You got a guess? Nina, you could be wrong twice. You want to try? Uh, <laughs> yes, Morgan? Confirmation? Ooh, confirmation? Uh, no, but close. Confession. Conflict, confession. C stands for confession. And what is confession? Uh, you might say, admit sins. You could also say to acknowledge wrong. Confession means to say, I'm sorry. That's maybe the best way to say it. Confession means to say, I'm sorry. Heavenly Father, you are an awesome God. And then you can move into confession. And Lord, I have not been awesome this week. I have failed to live according to your standards. I have messed up. I uh, confess your sins. All right, T, what does T stand for? Who's got a guess? This table likes to be wrong. What? Wow. Table, your turn. Uh, no, he, he knows right. Thanksgiving. Woo! T stands for Thanksgiving. That's the last time I trust someone who's not going to be. I'm not sure if they're going to write in the other box. You kind of know what Thanksgiving means, okay? No, Thanksgiving. It means to thank God for something. Yes. Thanks. All right, so we're going to praise God. We're going to confess how we've messed up. I'm going to thank him. Think of things you can thank him for. 
we might thank him, Lord, I thank you for the forgiveness you give me, even when I mess up. Or you could just thank him for something during the day, right? Heaven, Father, I messed up in this way, but thank you for an incredible day. Uh, we got to play kickball in June. All right, finally is an S. What do you think the S stands for? Socialism. <laughs> no, Lord. Yes. Sid. Wait. <laughs> salutation or something. What's that? Like salutation. Or, ooh, that's salutation. a church word. No. And that's a good church word. Uh, how are you back on this? Church. Salutation. Sacrament. 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 Eric Dunn doesn't teach you anything. Sacrament.
our same person didn't show up, so private number six. Uh, Lucas King. Lucas King. Lucas King. have not been pleasing to you. And we ask for your forgiveness. Lord, we give thanks that we have a God who does, in fact, forgive, that you love us dearly in your Son, Jesus Christ. And we give thanks not just for the blessings of forgiveness, but we give thanks for all the other blessings you give us, too. Uh, even for a chance to come together tonight and to be with one another. Lord, we ask that you bless us tonight, that when we leave, the rain would stop, uh, that we would have a good snack this evening, that we'd be able to get all of our homework done, and we could uh, continue to serve you tomorrow and throughout this week. We ask this in your name. Amen. All right, I need you a Bible. Grab a Bible for me. Don't get a hymnal. Grab a Bible. Don't get a hymnal. Grab a Bible. <laughs> Chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, Matthew, Mark, Luke, if you grabbed my Bible, we're going to be on page 1105, if you don't have my Bible, it'll be on a different page, but 1105, okay, Luke chapter 11, verse 1 through 13, anybody want to read this for us tonight, Morgan, all right, you got to find it. I'm good with that. Verse 1. Chapter 11, verse 1. 11, I'm in Acts. Matt, you, uh, you're too far. You Back said, up. You said 11. You're in 10. You said Luke. Which, uh, verse Luke. Find 11. Oh. You're on 5. Which verse? Verse, verse 1. Verse. Yep. 11, 5. Uh, 1 through 13. Thank you. All right. Hey, as you find it, Morgan's going to read for us nice and loud. Go for it, Morgan. Pause. What do we call that prayer? The Lord's Prayer, right? And it's a little bit different than what we say. We'll talk about that. But here, when the disciples say, Jesus, teach us how to pray, Jesus gives them a model prayer. All right, it's a model. And he gives them this prayer. All right, keep reading, Morgan. Verse 5.
All right. Uh, here, we hear an amazing text, and I want you to see what's going on. Jesus is making a comparison between how things work in this life and how things work with God. All right? So he talks about an earthly situation. He says, imagine, imagine you have a guest who comes over late at night, and they come from a long journey, and you need to give them something to eat, but you have no food in your house. That'd be kind of embarrassing, right? You could, I guess. Yeah, right. So what do you do? You go next door. You knock on the door to because your best friend lives next door. And you say, hey, best friend, I need your help. And your best friend says to you, hey, dude, it's like late at night. Uh, I'm tired. Leave me alone. I'm not going to help you. Right? And then, and then what, what happens in the situation? The guy keeps knocking. Let me in. Let me in. Let me in. And the guy goes, go away. It's nighttime. I don't want to help you. And what does the guy do? He keeps knocking. Knock and 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 And finally, because the guy keeps knocking on the door and he won't go away, what does the friend finally do? He finally opens it and gives him some food. All right? Now, here's the comparison. Jesus is saying, if this is how it works in your world, if people are going to help you because you keep nagging them, Imagine how it works with God, who actually wants to help you. God actually wants to help you, and if you ask him, what's he going to do? He's going to help you. So it's an amazing promise. Look at verse 9. And I tell you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks, it will be opened. Then he makes another example. He says, how many of you, if your son asks for a fish, something to eat, would instead give him a snake? Do you think your parents would do that? Yeah. Right? You say, hey, Dad, I'm really hungry. Can I have a quarter pounder and cheese from McDonald's? And your dad instead gives you a piranha to bite your hand. Right? That doesn't happen. Right? What does your dad say if you're hungry? He feeds you. Right? That's how it works. Or that's how it should work. All right? That's how it works. And Jesus says, if that's how earthly life works, imagine how it works with a heavenly Father who is always good, who always wants to help, and who always cares for you. And look at verse 13. I love this passage, or this verse. If then you who are, what's that word? Evil. What does Jesus call us? Evil. Evil. If you're a sinner, but you still know how to help people, imagine God who's not a sinner. Imagine how much he wants to help. Right? And so what's God going to give to those who ask him? We're told the Holy Spirit. So here is sometimes where prayer gets a little confusing. People want to take this passage and say, ask and it'll be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it'll be opened to you. And they'll want to say, see, look, God promises, if I ask for a Mustang, what's going to show up in my driveway? A Mustang. If I ask to win the lottery, what's God going to give me? The lottery. If I ask for a beautiful girl in a sundress, what's God going to give me? A beautiful girl in a sundress. Right? Is that how prayer works? No. No. Right? Prayer is a gift from God, and it's not this magic genie where if I rub the lamp or if I twist God's arm, God will give me whatever I want. That's not how this works. Prayer is a relationship. Prayer is talking to our Heavenly Father who wants to help us and helping us 
doesn't mean he just gives us anything we want. God wants to help us the right way. Let me give you another example. Let's say you ask your parents for... Oh, no, something more extreme. Let's say you ask your parents for a $50,000 car. All right? And your parent, they got a lot of money. They could say yes to that. If your parent says no to you, does that mean your parents are mean? Yes. No. What might your parents be doing that you don't even understand because you're only 16? They might be trying to teach you a lesson, right? Right? Is it a good idea to, to get a $50,000 gift for not working for it? No. Probably not. Most people do what to their first car? Do you know this story? Crash they crash them, right? So is it probably a good idea to do that? Probably not. And another example, this one's more close to home. Let's say you love the chocolates I brought today. And you say, Pastor, they're just so good. Can I have another one? 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 And now all of a sudden you've eaten 17, all right? Uh, do you think eating 17 is a good idea? No, you're going to have a belly ache later, right? And so if a parent or your pastor finally says, uh, Bella, I can give you 21, but no more, all right? That's not because your pastor hates you. It's because I care about you. And in a similar way, that's how God works. God wants to help us, but he's going to help us in the way he knows best. And sometimes we don't always understand, but God knows best and he answers that way. All right? So what comfort and promise do we receive from Jesus? He wants to help us. He wants to take care of us. All right, let's look at one more. So you're in Luke. You've got to go backwards now to Matthew. So Luke... Right before Luke is Mark, right before Mark is Matthew. It's the first book of the New Testament. We're going to Matthew chapter 6. Here's the other part where we see the Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter 6. If you got my Bible, it's going to be page 1030. Given to the needy, Yeah, uh, no, it says the, yes. But under verse 5, the Lord's Prayer. So chapter 6, verse 5. And I'm going to read. And here Jesus tells us another part of prayer. That when we pray, are we supposed to show off to people? Right? So is it okay in church when we're all praying together for the pastor to say fancy prayers? But would it be kind of weird if I went into Walmart and I stood inside my shopping cart and I said, Heavenly Father, I thank you that I'm not like the sinners gathered here today at Walmart. These people are eating junk food. They got waistlines bigger than a semi. These people are going to hell in a handbasket. And I am so thankful, so thankful that you have made me your child and I'm going to heaven. Do, do you think that's how we're supposed to pray? So, uh, no. That's not how we're supposed to pray. So today, Jesus gives us an answer. How do you pray? And his point is, prayer is a relationship between me and who? Me and God. And so do I have to tell everybody about it? No, it's me and God. So let's, let's hear that. Verse 5, I'm going to read. Jesus says, When you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But, but when you pray, go into your room and shut the door. Pray to your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them. For your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Did you hear that part? I love that. Let me read that one more time. Verse 7. When you pray, do not heap up empty phrases. Right? Empty words. What does that mean? We don't have to have all of this fancy speech. Right? But how do we get to pray? We get to pray simply. Verse 8. Do not be like them. And why not? Because your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Hey, isn't that cool? God who knows everything, he knows that you need a new cell phone. And he knows you're going to ask him for one. God knows that your belly is grumbling and you're going to say, Lord, can my mom make supper already? I'm hungry. God already knows. And before you even ask him, he knows and he's ready to say yes, right? 
He is ready to help his people. Uh, this is the beautiful part of prayer. God knows and he wants to help. All right, verse 9. He says, so pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. All right. So here's where we see the Lord's Prayer in the Bible. Questions so far? All right. So we're moving in our understanding of prayer. Prayer is talking to God. It's a gift from God. And he actually wants to hear from us. All right. If you would then take out your catechism and go to page 19. Take out your catechism. Go to page 19. And on the bottom of page 3, we're going to fill this in. Okay? Okay. And actually, we're going to go to page 20. All right. So here's what we're going to find. We've talked about a model prayer, the Acts prayer. I've taught you another prayer, just the one through four, right? We're going to address God. We're going to thank God. We're going to ask him for something. We're going to say amen. These are all models. And what we find is Jesus gives us a prayer. It's the Lord's prayer. Is it the only prayer we can say? No, there's other prayers. Um, but we would say it's the best prayer because Jesus gives it to us. And in this model prayer, Jesus actually gives us not four sections, but there's seven. We call them petitions. Do you know what a petition means? It means a request. All right? It's a request. So I'm going to have you write down. And, and you know what? We just talked about busy work. This sounds like busy work. But we're writing it down because it's going to help us remember. All right? So think about the Lord's Prayer right now, and they're all in your, uh, in your catechism, page 20. So the first petition, number one, write it down. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. The second petition. Thy kingdom come. The third petition. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And what you found, we'll talk about this in a moment, but what you're going to find is that these first three petitions are going to talk about God, and then the next ones kind of talk about us, okay? Here, keep writing them down. Get them all. So the fourth petition, yeah. give us this day our daily bread. The fifth petition, forgive, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. The sixth petition, lead us not into temptation. And the seventh petition, but deliver us from evil. Okay. Where are we at? Did you get Wait, them all right now? Not yet. Keep uh -oh. working. And seven. Six and seven. Oh, wait, I guess it's all. That's the 
So the Lord's Prayer has seven petitions, seven requests, and it kind of helps us formulate our thoughts. All right, how do we pray? How are we doing? You're okay. You almost done? Yeah, no, it's a lot to write. I'm not trying to rush you, Ella. I'm not trying to rush you. All right, we got just a few minutes. We're going to look at the introduction to the Lord's Prayer here at the top of page four, okay? So the Lord's Prayer's got seven petitions, but how does it start? It starts with an introduction. All right, our Father who art in heaven. And Martin Luther helps us to understand, well, what does that mean? Here's what he says. With these words, God tenderly invites us to believe that he is our true father and that we are his true children. So that with all boldness and confidence, we may ask him as dear children, ask their dear father. Wait, we just did this. That was our memory work today. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see how I timed that right? That was the whole plan. All right. All right, good, good, good. Letter A, let me know what you think about this. I'll give prayer a chance. Ah, What could it hurt? I've tried everything else. I might as well try prayer. Sometimes people seek help from God only as a last resort. How does praying on the outside chance it might work or only as a last resort say about someone's view of God? Yeah, talk to me about that. So if we say things like, well, I might as well pray. I've tried everything else. Right? As if prayer is the last thing that we try, what does that say about what we believe about God? That we don't actually think that it will probably work. Otherwise, we would have used prayer as our first resort instead of our last. All right, I like that. So one part of that, we don't believe prayer works. Right? I'd write that down. We don't, they don't believe prayer works. Yeah, okay, right, so God's not most important, good, and I think even, too, we don't believe God is either he can or he wants to help us, yeah. We don't take God seriously. Don't take God seriously, right? So when we always think of prayer as a last resort, we don't believe prayer works, we don't think about God first, we don't think he can help us, Um, yeah, those are all good answers. Uh, And you know what I found, guys? Do you know how easy it is to fall into this trap? Where we always try to fix it first, and then once we failed everything, then we say, well, okay, we might as well pray. And we might not always say it that bluntly, but don't we do that? Right? This is a good reminder to us. Prayer should always be the first thing that we do. Right? The first thing that we do. All right. Um, in this petition, letter B, Jesus invites us to call upon God as our Savior. Ooh, not Savior. Father. Father. Right, Father. Right, that's in the box. He's our true Father. Right, so that's kind of interesting. How is it possible that we can call God our Father? Right, same word, two blanks in a row. How is it possible that we could actually call God, the one who made everything, our Father? That, that seems like too ter- personal, doesn't it? You think of, let's say you go out to, uh, to the White House. Would you call the president, hey, Dad? That'd be kind of weird, right? If you go to Chicago to the, to the CEO of McDonald's, would you ever call the McDonald's CEO, Daddy? That'd be kind of weird. If you ever meet Jeff Bezos, the Amazon guy, 
Would you come sit on his lap and say, hey, Dad, that would be kind of weird, right? That'd be kind of weird. And yet even more powerful than the most powerful men in the world is God. And God says, don't call me God. Don't call me some faraway person, mister or the like. He says, call me a personal relationship. Call me dad, right? Call me father. So, so think about this too. We sometimes do this with people we know, right? So if you talk to an adult, your mom and dad tell you to call them Mr. or Mrs., right? That's often how we talk to people. I'm Pastor Schultz or Mr. Giordano or Mr. G or something like that, right? But if an adult is a family friend, what do you get to call them? By their first name, right? It's a closer, more intimate relationship. And God says, don't think of me as some big person that you can't come talk to. He says, think of me like your father. It's a personal relationship. So how is it possible? Let's go back to letter C. Now let's go to A. Here's what Galatians 3 says. Fill in the blank with me. Galatians 3 says, In Christ Jesus, you are all sons, write that down, sons of God through faith. So through Christ, we become sons of God. Now when it says sons of God, does it mean girls too? It, it does, absolutely. Right? Think of when we say like the creed and we say uh, um, all mankind. Does mankind include women too? Right? It's not man and womankind. It's mankind. Right? This is the same thing. We all become sons of God. Now here's the other reason it says sons. In Jesus' day, all right, girls, I'm sorry. This is just how it worked in Jesus' day. Who got to inherit? The boys. Now, 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 pause. I know that sounds crazy, but actually this makes sense. Why did the girls not inherit? Because when the girls got married, their husbands inherited, they got the husband's stuff. Right? That was the thought. And they, take, they become part of that family. Right? So that's the thought. It's not because they hated women. That, that's not the thought. But in Jesus' day, who got to inherit? The sons did. And Jesus says that because we're connected to Jesus in baptism, that's how Galatians goes on, in baptism, all of us become sons of God, which means we're heirs of everything that's God's. And what, what does God own? Everything. Everything. Through faith in Jesus, everything becomes ours. That is amazing. So through Jesus, you and I become children of God. Now look at verse, or letter B. From 1 John 3, we're told, see what kind of love, right? Fill that in love, the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. This was uh, Ella, your Christmas verse on Christmas Eve, or the children's pageant, the Sunday school program, right? And Sam, you said it during practice, and I yelled at you for speaking too quietly. Sorry. Sorry. All right. See what kind of love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God. So, so this is amazing. Because we have faith in Jesus, we become children of God, right? We become brothers to Jesus and sisters to Jesus. We become part of God's family. And if we're part of God's family, who's dad? The Father, right? And so that's why we can call him Father. Now, letter D. Uh, how does calling God our Father shape our prayers? We'll go back to the box. Look at that last line. So that with all boldness and confidence. Right? Write that down for letter A. Boldness and confidence. Now when we pray, if God is... Let's back up. If you would call the president, do you think he'd listen to you? Probably not. Do you think he'd even take your phone call? No. Probably not. But if you called your dad, your dad might say no, but is your dad going to answer the phone? Yeah. Yes. And is your dad going to probably listen to you and answer you? Yes. Right? So this is amazing. Because we are children of God, and God is our Father, when we pray, we have confidence that he's going to hear me. 
The most powerful man in the world is going to hear me and answer me, and he wants to give me what I ask. Isn't that amazing? That's what's so cool about prayer. We believe that the Father is, or God is our Father, and he wants to hear our prayers, and he's going to answer us. All right, we'll do letter B next time. We'll pick up with this. Uh, any questions tonight before we close? We got letter. No, 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 letter A is boldness and confidence. One thing, sorry. Any questions about prayer? All right, so I hope you see why your pastor encourages you to pray. When we pray, we actually get to talk to the most powerful person in the world, and he wants to answer us. All right, uh, fold your hands. We'll say a prayer, and uh, we'll do another Acts prayer tonight. That'll be a good one for us. Heavenly Father, you are our wonderful God who listens to us and cares for all our needs. Lord, we recognize that we don't always pray. We forget, we fall asleep, we get busy doing other things. But Lord, we thank you that when we are unfaithful in our prayer life, you are always faithful to us. And we give thanks that even despite our lack of prayers, you already know what we want and what we need and you have a desire to give us those things. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would bless our remaining time together. Help those who still need to do memory work to finish up. Help us to have a good time uh, with snacks and fellowshipping with one another. And help us to get home dry this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. That was, that was what? That was part of it. About memory work?